I may not like what he's about to say, but I have to set that platform for me to become his vulnerability dumping ground because it matters, right? What's it up, matters. Brave Arts community, this is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary Terry Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. Now, let me just preface by saying this. Usually when I'm screening people, we usually do a 15 minute Zoom call. You know, we usually do that before we record. But with today's guest, her vibe was so raw. I was like, we don't even need to do a Zoom call. We just gonna jump on and make this happen. Anyway, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> today's <Yeah>. guest. <laughs> He's the founder of Ready Reset Grow. I love that. Uh, that partners with alternative life coaching techniques, educational material, workshops, and community-based resources to improve the quality of one's life. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Lyanne. How you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? I am great. I've been waiting to get this done. You know, we ran into some time. Conflict and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah, you know, life, life, ha life happens. But like I told you, I said we can get it done. Let's get it done. For sure, I appreciate that. Let's jump into today's segment. I wanted to ask you, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh, that's a good one. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Because I come from a broken home. Right. So um, my parents were never married. They dated. My dad was a big time baller um, in New York. And um, he linked with my mom. And I mean, he left when I was four. So um, in hindsight, you know, growing up uh, through adolescent and, and young adulthood, teenagehood or whatever the case may be, it was just like that father figure was absent, even though I had my uncles because my mom comes from a huge family. Um, but they really couldn't teach me anything. Right. Um, and and I, I don't want to sound too negative, but let's just let's just give it raw deal. Right. So my mom taught me um, how to be complacent, how to silence my voice. A woman should be seen and not heard and, um, you know, do whatever it needs to be done to, uh, you know, to sustain the family. Right. She gave me what she had in that season. And so um, at this age that I am 45, you know, I give her a lot of graces because she didn't have that skill set coming from her mother, right? Um, my dad taught me how to be a runner, right? He ran. And so it wasn't until I was about 36 um, that I had a really heart to heart because I was broken from the time that I was 16 up until 33, you know? Um, so I had to have a heart to heart with him. And, you know, he just basically said, you know, him and my mom really just didn't get along. And he had to cut ties with everything that was attached to her, even if it meant cutting ties with me. And so um, I really didn't see positive marriage growing up, but I knew that it existed, even though my my grandpa and my my Nana were were married, his parents. Um they love the snot at each other. So I held on to that for dear life. Like this, this could work. Marriage can work. Marriage is a beautiful entity when it's done um, the proper way. But no, I, uh, unfortunately I didn't get that, um, that uh, marriage uh, advice or that model in my life from my parents. And it's, it's unfortunate, but again, I tell people all the time, you got to grace your parents of what they give you because sometimes they can't give you what they don't have inside of them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it makes perfect sense. I I, I totally understand. Because yeah. um I was I was a love child. We're the same age. Mm. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to 45. Right. Shout out to 45, right? <laughs> Two yeah, be, from 50. I know, right? I'll be 46 <laughs> next month. So you know all right. Have, okay. Come on now. Yeah, so we having real conversation. We having grown folk conversation. Grown folk conversation. Heal conversation. Right. Heal people right. Heal differently. Um, yeah, for sure. And we move differently. For real. And yeah. uh, I was birthed out of adultery, and my Ooh. dad was married, and I didn't understand that until maybe I think my mom had that that conversation with me while I was maybe like eleven or twelve. And even mm -hmm. still, 
trying to understand that at that age, I was like, hmm. so I was kind of mad yeah. at my mom because I'm just like, why? How did you, yeah, like how did you, how did you get involved in something like that? Real talk. I remember one day my mom was crying and I remember she came in a room and she she was talking to me and it was my dad and his wife anniversary. And my mom was crying and she was talking to me and I'm just like, why you let him treat you like this? You know, why would you let him be in this relationship with you? You know, so I'm upset. Right, so, right. Not knowing the bigger picture. Right. And now that I'm older, we have those conversations. And I'm just like, what was your mindset at that time? You know, those different right. kind of things. Because even for me, I can't I can't imagine stepping out on my wife and having a whole family on the side. I, you know, I'm, I'm, try I'm trying to keep up with what I got. <laughs> okay, so it, it happens and it happens in such a way. And I know we're going to dive into that. Yeah. But a lot of the adultery, a lot of the infidelity um, that causes divorce, right? And that miscommunication, that separation is a lot of emotional attachment, right? So like when your mom was probably shedding her tears is because she's emotionally connected. Before, the, the, before there's even any, any physical entity happening, there's an emotional bond that is that is formed and that anniversary sparks something within us like, you know, it could be tears of, of regret. It could be tears of frustration. It's like, how do I get, how did I get myself into this? You know, and now I have a child from it. Yeah. That's deep. Yeah. Right. It, you know, it, but anyway, it ain't about me. We, we, we talking, we, we kicking it today. Nah, look, we dialoguing. Let's get it. Let's it, get it. Let's, let's set the platform for what we're about to talk about. For sure. Well, since we here, let let's let's jump into that because I was listening to your podcast. Love the podcast, by the way. I appreciate the content. You talked about going through infidelity, and yeah. can you walk us through your healing process? Because I think that was part one. You kind of gave a little more detail. I think is mm -hmm. part one, and I want to know what did that look like for you going finding out what happened with the adultery and then how did you heal? Cause the way I hear you talk now, you are healed. I can tell when people are healed and when they're not. Yeah, yeah, you know, it took me a long time. It took me, God, years to get to where I'm at right now, right? But, uh, you know, for anybody that's listening, it's it's possible, it, it's possible to, you know, to thrive, to become a better person. I always say God restored my years. Um, because of my faithfulness is because of my obedience during that time, because I remember it's like a simple prayer, Lord, if this is not for me, take it from me, but give me peace when you do it, because you know that my heart is in it. Right. Um, and I remember just praying that over and over again. And, and when that time came, it was just like, okay, fine. You know, this is something that I was dealt, but it was an absence of the red flags, you know? So when you're going through your healing journey, we're going through that um, that process of putting your life back together, per se. Um, there's a season of accountability, right? You have to sit with yourself and say, yes, I ignored all the red flags. You know, dating my ex-husband, I knew um, that he didn't want any kids. I knew that he wasn't faithful of the way that we engaged, even though he was with someone else. Um, you know, there were times that, you know, I knew that he was, he was cheating just by, um, conversations that we, he would have with females in front of me, right. The lack of respect that he carried for me. Right. So those are all red flags that sometimes we miss and we chalk it off to, um, what every woman believes that they can do is that if I love him, I can love him to change. Right. I can love him to become a better man. I can sow those seeds and, and water those seeds and he'll change. But honey, the truth of the matter is, is that he's going to have to want to change for himself, not for you. It has nothing to do with you. Evolving as a person, um, and I just speak personally, is for you. You benefit off of it. Everybody else just gets the residue, what falls off of you. Um, and it, it's edible. It's nourishing. 
it's able to bear fruit. But when you talk about your cup, and I'm a woman of faith, so you'll hear me kind of correlate a lot with with um, just my spirituality. When you're talking about your cup running over, that cup is for you. What's inside of that cup is for you. Anything that pours out and over is for everybody else, you mm. know? And so um, journeying through my healing uh, started with accountability, starting from the beginning. And not being so mad at so for his actions is because I can't be mad of what he or he's already shown me or what he's told me, right? Um, now I have to find out why I didn't listen and what was going on inside of me. And um, it got to the point where I got into therapy and I got into coaching and I suffered from abandonment issues, mm -hmm. right? Um, from my dad, from you know, not having that emotional connection with my mom because she was trying to do the best she can with what she had, you know? And um, my dad wasn't physically there. He wasn't financially there. He wasn't emotionally there. And so therefore I started picking men that were unemotionally, uh, non -emotional, uh, unemotionally available, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, mm -hmm. fina un fi not financially available, not spiritually available, mm -hmm. everything that my father was because I was used to that you know and so um it took me years to arrive at that it took me years and then then I had to go through forgiveness that is the hardest part you know when you want to when you walk in on someone cheating you want to hit them with your car door right mm -hmm. that's just that's just the nature thing I just did like lord I, I don't want to I don't want to kill him look I just want I just want to bruise his thigh real quick you know but um then I had to go through forgiveness and that is the biggest thing when, uh, when you truly forgive and it's not, I'll never forget, but the sting is not there. Mm -hmm. The pain is not there. The resentment is not there. The bitterness is not there. The angriness is not there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I forgive him, but mm -hmm. this is what I do know. When you forgive somebody that has not really made amends with themselves, your forgiveness is like, I can't take it. I'd rather you be mad at me than for you for, to forgive me because I love you. Mm -hmm. Love holds no bearing on what you do to me because that means that I never really loved you in the first place, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I would just encourage people to go through the process. And when you sit through it, it's uncomfortable. It's painful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's freeing yeah. and it's peace. You know, and you'll you'll look youthful. I promise you. Trust me. You know, if that if that marriage was sucking the life out of you, when you when you lay your bags down and decide to pick up new and tangible and and joyful bags, honey, it's a beautiful thing, male or female. I promise you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Brave Arts community. So if you are listening to the podcast, you have to go check out the video to see Coach, because Coach don't look like what she been through. So you're going to have to no. check out the video as well. So make sure you do that as well. Right. <laughs> I appreciate the plug. Oh, <laughs> uh, for sure. Where, because I was listening to the podcast, you talk a lot about accountability. Mm -hmm. This is something that I want, should I call it a lost art? I don't know. But today, accountability is almost like a curse word. So mm -hmm. where did, where did you, when did you learn to take accountability and, and who did you get it from? Because to me, that's a, that's a beautiful trait to have. Yeah. Yeah. Therapy. You'll hear me say, you probably hear it on a lot of my podcasts, get into therapy, get into coaching, get into therapy, get into coaching. Um, so, and you know, just accountability really starts in therapy. Um, you know, I, that's why you hear me say, get into coaching, get into therapy, get into coaching, get into therapy, because that's where I learned to be accountable. And part of, part of your, your healing and who you become as a person, um, needs to start with you first. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm, I'm big on accountability and it's a hard, that's a hard thing to sit with, to sit with your failures, to sit with your shortcomings, to sit with your inadequateness as a person, 
and really deep dive into becoming a better version of yourself for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can be a better person to someone else. You could be a better, better lover, a better provider for your children. It made me into a better mother, mm -hmm. you know, um, just because I had kids young. And so my daughter ended up growing up with me growing up. And, you know, I had to heal some of the things that, that I, I was responsible for in her life. And I remember telling her, like, I had to hold myself accountable. I need to be that bridge. And that bridge is a two-way, one-way, however way street you want to call it. How many times you want to come back across until your heart is healed, right? Um, I can't tell you how you feel feel but I can tell you how I made you feel right you can tell me that you can express that to me and I'm gonna have to take accountability for it nobody can ever tell you how to feel but they can bring clarification and understanding to say that that's not what I meant right that's not what was my intention um but really accountability starts with yourself holding yourself accountable for where you are in life does that make sense? Yes. Yes, yeah. it does. Because I've heard a lot of guys complain about when they're dating or when they're in long-term relationships. They say, you know, women just struggle with being accountable. Yeah. That's, that's, it's in my inbox. It's in my coaching. Guys, yeah. they just swear up and down that women don't know how to be held accountable. So when you talked about that, I said, we're going to talk about this. You know, okay, so it's not it's not so much accountability for women. It's about, are you my safe space? Can mm -hmm. I be vulnerable with you um, to let you into the inner parts of my heart? But because I can't allow you because of certain behavior that you display to me, now I become uncoachable. I'm not holding, you're not accountable for your actions. No, I don't trust you with the inner parts of me and if men and this is just not a jab at men so please do not come at me from my inbox because i am about to smoke i promise you i am right but um men have a hard time see uh, accountability is not nagging it's saying i love you enough to bring something to your attention because what you're doing is causing an issue and if you continue to do this thing we're gonna have a problem Right. Um, but simultaneously, men and women need to become safe space for each other. So that woman can say, you know what? I hear that you're, you're saying that I'm spending too much, that I'm shopping too much. I need to get into coaching, get into therapy to find out why I drown myself in unnecessary shoes. Why do I drown myself in uh, unnecessary spending? Where is that validation coming from? And where is that void so I can plug that void? And so therefore we can have financial freedom, right? And being able to receive that, right? I mean, I mean, give me, look, let me know. Let me know if, if, if I'm giving it to you like you want me to give it to you because we're gonna have, we're gonna have a talk. We're going to talk honestly. Um, and so again, for women, right? We need to be able to, to have that feedback from our men or when they say, listen, you know, I have a safe word that I like to use. And if he uses that safe word, you know, I become his safe space. And so therefore I have to check my feelings at the door. I may not like what he's about to say, but I have to set that platform for me to become his vulnerability dumping ground because it matters, right? It matters. Um, and I did a reel, so you guys can check out the reel. It's just like, you know, in my mind, I'm playing it back. Like, Lord, he better not tell me nothing soon because I'm going to snatch the soul from him. But I knew at that time he was letting me know, I don't have to tell you this, but I trust you and I respect you enough to bring this to your attention and let you know that I, I hear you and I see you. To be seen is a beautiful thing, but to be heard is a glorious thing. If that makes sense. Ooh, this is good. I'm gonna have to share a couple <laughs> of these as as clips of reels because that's that's a whole message within itself. Because 
I know for my wife and I, one thing I learned, and I've shared the story before, that my mentor, he was married over 50-something years, and, and he's passed on. And I remember in my first marriage, I was having some difficulties. And he would always tell me, he said, Sean, this, and this is old school stuff. He would say, Sean, whenever she let out her lion, you let out your lamb. Yeah, man, come on with it. And and when he told me that, I was like, break it down. His, we used to call him Papa Mosley. Papa Mosley, break it down. And uh -huh. he told Make me, it he, plain. Yeah, he said, whenever, he said, someone has to be the sacrificial lamb in a relationship. He said, it doesn't always have to be all the time. He said, but what you're doing is, you are setting the example. He's like, because yeah. sometimes we get into relationships and we we don't give them an example of what uh, love and sacrifice look like. We just live in our life. Right. So when I started applying that, that's when my marriage changed because there would be times when my wife, I'm like, oh, I know she's in the wrong or whatever. We had this whole conversation, but I would be the example. Mm -hmm. And then she would see, oh, He's extending grace to me. Now that I see what that looks like, but as a yeah. man, I have, to, I have to lead, right? So right, right. as I lead, now when I show her that, now when I'm under the gun, she can, we can have that conversation and she can show me that grace because now she understands what that looked like. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what, what and I'm just going to piggyback on what you said is, is because sometimes we have to make that accommodation, right? We both can't be on 10 and think that something is going to work. Like you rah, rah, I'm rah, rah. Like, no, someone has to be on two and then someone has to be on 10 is because then I'm opening that platform for you to say, I'm hearing what you're saying and I'm listening, I'm dissecting, and I'm not listening to respond. I'm looking to see not how I can fix the problem, but how we can collectively say, okay, I see you have this issue. What, what does a resolution look like to you, right? And then I'll support you in that decision. Yeah. Right? So yeah. collectively, like, it is what is a win-win. You know, I, honey, <laughs> <laughs> we can go look and I have so much that I want to say in regards to that because like I said marriage is a beautiful thing when it's yeah. done with the right person Same but way. when you have when you have people during conversations that are triggered like I'm talking about word triggering okay oh it's not that serious or um you're you over crazy you're crazy mm -hmm. right or you're over exaggerating or you think too much into things or you take things to when you start that thing even though they may have been a little bit more emotional than you are used to right those are triggering words and it does not open the door for effective communication and making those accommodations to make sure that marriage works you gotta work at marriage it's not for honey it's not for the weak. It's not for the selfish. It's not for the narcissistic people, right? Those people need to stay single until they get that stuff out of their spirit. But marriage works when you work it. And when you commit to that partner to say, you know what, regardless of what transpires within reason, right? Because it's marriage and giving people that pass does not give them carte blanche to do whatever they want to do and expect. Don't abuse grace in a marriage, right? So if you cheated, uh, don't expect your partner to forgive you again and again and again and again. Repeated behavior becomes a choice, you know? Um, don't abuse grace, but know that you're in it to win it when you guys come together and collectively uh, get a mutual understanding about, you know, how to communicate. And that is the biggest thing that I can say. So all good stuff, honey. Like we can go on and on, but let's, let's, Let's pause and regroup because we can go off on a tangent. <laughs> okay, and, and you talked about uh, infidelity since we're here, but how do you effectively co-parent after going Ooh. through infidelity? Because in my mind, I'm thinking, how do how do you pull that off? Knowing what you happened? do, because yeah. it, it didn't happen to the kids. Mm. It didn't happen to them. It happened to you. 
And so that's when we come back to that healing journey and that accountability journey and understanding and putting it into perspective. Your husband, your wife cheated on you. Yes, granted, the kids are a casualty of war, but that does not um, put a gray cloud over their parenting and their love for their children. Mm-hmm. You know, my ex-husband, my ex-husband cheated on me. He wasn't mm-hmm. good to me, right? Um, could he be a better, better father? Absolutely. Could he be a better husband? Absolutely, right? But at the at that core piece, it was me and him. And it's like, how do we lessen the blow? Because now our children, because of your actions, are are separated, right? Mom is going to be, because majority of the parents are single moms after divorces. It's rare that children go with the father, right? And so now dad is absence of the home. So now we have to figure out how do you not become absent in their life? Mm. you know but then we we roll into guilt guilt takes a big picture because now your kids have questions of why dad's not around and that's something that you have to tell them because let me tell it to them in that unforgiveness bitter stage you are no good nothing Mm -hmm. but in my heel stage and my my arena that I'm in right now and I've been in here for decades is like you know things happen Mm-hmm. you know life goes on it that dad that loves you mm-hmm. you know it, it has no reflection of who you are as an individual or as a child right parents mm-hmm. go through issues and unfortunately that was uh the straw that ended our marriage and dad and I are no longer together yeah and sometimes it can be challenging to separate the children from what happened yeah you know because those emotions take over yeah. You know, you know, you're not thinking about the kids. You just hurting. Yeah. But watch your words. And that season, I promise you, watch your words, what you say. Because you can either breathe new life into that situation or you can destroy your family and destroy your kids. And you never want to taint their viewpoint of their father because guess what? Dad cheated, but mom had a hand in it too. Yeah. Right. And that's just that's just real. And that's just something I had because, you know, um, sometimes we neglect certain things within our relationship um, and we don't want to say uh, that neglect led to um, that one day at work, that spousal wife hit the core. I see it day in and day out with the job that I do. There are such things as spousal uh, work spouses. OK, and if you don't believe that they exist, you're naive because they do. And so, you know, when I, from a coaching standpoint, I tell people all the time, men and women, you send your spouse out if they go out into the workplace to the wolves, keep them covered, love on them, because there's one wolf waiting to devour that lover of yours, right? And so if you don't believe that having a peaceful house and uh, a house full of love and healthy sex and healthy engagement and healthy cuddling and individual space allow him to go out with the boys you go out with the girls right um give them that space that they need to have their individuality because they're still a child of god they still have their dreams and aspirations you know it has no reflection of them not wanting to be with you Mm, you know but that accountability let me know that um there were some parts of our relationship that I was neglecting as a wife and could it possibly be you know the reason why absolutely in this situation it probably wasn't because you know it's been years that he was doing it so um you know first time shame on shame on you second time shame on you third time yeah. it is what it is you know yeah um so just watch your words i would say watch your words with your kids because um they go through the divorce with you, mm-hmm. even though they're not with you, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah, because my daughter, when I was going through my divorce, she was 14 and she has so many questions and I wouldn't talk to her to the extent that I, I just felt like there was a lot of stuff she couldn't handle. Yeah. And, and trying to give her that age appropriate conversation, but the age appropriate conversation, she was just like, 
I ain't feeling that. Right, so, right. Yeah. As years went by, now we are a lot better. We're closer because mm-hmm. now she she see the whole picture. Now she's like, oh, oh, okay. yeah, uh-huh. you know, so, yeah. So, if your kids are not closer. old enough, yeah. If your kids are not old enough to have that conversation, pin it, you know, and let them know that they can come back to you at any time, regardless of the age that they're at. When they mm-hmm. when they feel like they're ready. They can come back and have that conversation. Just be open and honest about it because they know kids were in the house when y'all were fighting. Nothing yeah. is going to uh, to catch them off guard. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I was listening. You dropped a quote uh, that blew me away. And I was like, I'm going to use this. I'll make sure I give you <laughs> credit. But you said, if the streets is what you want, allow it to warm your bed at night. Man, come on now because the streets is not loyal. <laughs> they are not loyal they are not loyal but if that's what you want you know at ta- I tell people all the time don't hold on to anything that doesn't want to be held on to toss them back toss mm. them back cast your net on the other side mm. right don't worry about uh, what they're doing you know because at the at the end of it you know you want to make sure that you come out on top not yes. only just emotionally spiritually physically and financially, but most importantly, mentally, because it does take a mental toll on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I said that, that line was so (laughs) cold. I said, if I was a rapper, I would put it in a song. Man, listen, come on now. (laughs) Look, come on now, but it's Uh, good. Look, you can use it. Yeah, I will. I know, he can use it, right? My my grandbaby is agreeing. Yeah, I've tweeted it already. (laughs) <laughs> I gotta go back and look at your tweet. Okay, oh I gotta my. reshare that. Yeah, that was cool. What is the biggest mistake you see women make when it comes to dating and relationships? All their eggs in one basket. Date them all, sis. Date them all. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm not talking about sleeping with everybody, but date them all. Mm-hmm. Have a healthy engagement, healthy adult engagement with everybody because at that point you're going to find out what you don't like and you're going to find out what you do like Mm -hmm. and we put our eggs we are so tunnel vision when it comes to dating right when it comes to someone that we like we get i know i know nana trying to tell them look tunnel vision and we put all our eggs in one basket and we don't experiencing dating in the in the single season that we're in the single season is the most important season outside of picking your spouse and you got to enjoy it date them all they don't have to know about each other and if you're not good with with multitasking and time management click the link in my bio i'll help you out with that but honey you can date them all you know and then you know eliminate as you go along but Stop putting all the eggs in one basket. That's what I see a lot of women do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Brave Hearts community, drop some fire in the comment <laughs> section because we are having a, a conversation that's out of this world. I'll make sure I have you linked up in the comment section as well. So those who want to get in touch with you, I'll make sure that uh, they'll get in touch with you. Last yeah, question. Absolutely. Let's go. Last question. There's plenty more. We're gonna have to probably do a part two because there's so much more I want to ask. But I'm up uh, for it. Just hit me up in the hit me up in the inbox and we'll do it. I will for sure. So is coach opening up? Is are you open to remarry or are you done with marriage? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think honestly i I'm a better woman inside of a union. Uh, you know, and so therefore, I just know that God has uh, birthed me for that. Um, I am positioning myself properly this time around. Shout out to Dr. Al Dewan Tart in Atlanta, Georgia, my therapist. So if you're looking for a therapist, he is dope. Um, I'll send you his contact information. And uh, so he positions um, me properly to make sure that I'm attracting uh, suitable mates. And um, I love, I think marriage is a beauty. I know Nana's trying to get married, Pooh, but, um, you know, uh, marriage is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful entity when it's done the right way. And so even though I wasn't successful, and I say I because I had a hand in my, the dissolution of my marriage, right, in my divorce, um, 
I just know for sure this next time around, God is going to be all in and through it. So I'm open. My heart's open. It's ready. Um, shoot your shot. No, I'm only, I'm only messing with you. Do not shoot your shot because I would hate to reject it. Okay. But um, no, I'm, I'm open. I'm open. My heart's open. It's, it's a safe space uh, for myself, for my emotions. So uh, it just welcomes the right person. Mm, I hear that. Well, <laughs> Coach Lyon, I want to <laughs> I want to acknowledge you for uh, the the wisdom and the the transparency that you share with so many of us, and uh, just being a voice for this culture because Lord knows we need to hear as much from you as possible, uh, so we can kind of help bring on these younger generations and. Amen. I want to acknowledge you for your transparency and being able to speak, you know, going through your experience and yeah. being honest with it. So I want to acknowledge you for those things. And uh, thanks again Appreciate for taking it. some time. It. For sure. Appreciate for being a guest. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Um, so you can find me on all social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook, Lion and Net. Um, that's L Y A N E. That's N-A-N-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. um, you can reach me at 832-994-4365. That is my business line. If you're looking for coaching, um, if you're looking just to get your life back on track or try to navigate through a divorce, I'm a sounding board. Two heads are better than one. Um, you know, you can always reach out. Um, I'll drop my link here for you guys um, for, for anything that you may need. Just, you know, allow me to, to assist you. Allow me to help you help you, if I can say that. Yeah, for sure. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you get in contact with Coach. Like I said, I want to make sure that I leave the comments uh, section open and that I'll have yes. uh, information there below. So also, if you are listening to this via your podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. By doing so, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card who doesn't like free things. If you are watching this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this video with someone because someone might be going through a divorce now and they need to hear what coach is talking. So make sure you do that as well. Share that with somebody. I realized if you can get your videos in people's group chats, you winning. That Hey, come on now. <laughs> drop them here. Start here. Start in this particular podcast uh session drop them here and i i engage so if, if you're you know if you're open to getting that feedback on an open platform drop that drop that comment drop that i'm trying to let them know stink but uh <laughs> she look it's crazy when a nine month agrees with you right um and if you're not comfortable asking your questions in the comment please hit me in my inbox you will talk there I know I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Thank you all for watching, listening, and subscribing in the comments. Y'all have been showing so much love. This is Sean Heineman with special guests. Well, I am the next. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Take care.